Hi everyone, I'm Shelly and you're watching There's No Place Like Home. I'm back with another homeschooling video today. And today's topic actually stems from a comment that I received on this channel about five months ago. And so today's topic is when your husband disagrees with your homeschool style. This comment is from Seinfeld Chick, and it says, how would you handle parental differences in homeschooling? For example, one parent is very traditional, a rule follower, and former public school student, and believes that's how their kids should be taught, i.e. all work, done at a desk, up early, etc. Whereas another parent is much more alternative, somewhat laid back and less regimented in how an average homeschool day looks. So first of all, I want to say that I know that there are both homeschool moms and homeschool dads. However, I am going to approach this as a homeschool mom who has a husband that, yes, I believe in biblical submission, so I will submit to my husband. This doesn't, however, mean in cases where a husband might not necessarily agree with his wife's homeschool style that she can't say anything at all and here are my thoughts on this so first of all I just want to say that if you have a husband who disagrees with your homeschool style typically the way that it works is that the husband will usually expect something more structured something like what they grew up doing in school and the moms who are typically the homeschool parent not always but typically are the homeschool parent we very often looked into it a bit more you know we've read the books we've read the blogs we've talked to other homeschooling parents and we've actually tried it out just by experience so when it comes down to it those experience that we have often lead us down a different path than what we grew up with when most of us went to traditional school even if you go to a private school it still has basically the same model of what a public school does so when you have a father a husband who is looking at the way that their child is being educated in what is a foreign way to them some of them can be a little worried about that I have to say that I was blessed with a husband who pretty much leaves the homeschooling methods up to me. He trusts that I know what I'm doing with my children and I'm really thankful for that because I know that not everybody has that. But I'm still going to share some tips with you and even if you are a homeschool dad, you might be able to apply some of this too if, you, if your wife maybe isn't agreeing with the way that you're doing things. But the first thing that I would say is don't get defensive have an actual conversation. I know that it can be tough because these are our children and we're very passionate about them, but we need to remember that getting defensive and arguing about it never ends up the way that we're hoping that it will. So when you have this conversation, you know, sit down with your husband and tell him why you would like to homeschool in whatever method it is that you have chosen. Maybe it fits you better maybe it fits your children better maybe it is the the most easily manageable style for you for example if you have a lot of children you might want a more relaxed style simply because at that season of your life it works for you better and a lot of times if you articulate your feelings to your husband and don't get angry about it he's going to listen now some husbands might be interested in the history of public education of modern schooling not all of them I'm going to say that most probably are not but if you have one who would be interested in, in learning about it I recommend that you have them read the book the underground history of American education by John Taylor Gatto I will leave a link to that in the description box that really opened my eyes to why things are done in school the way that they are done so if your if your husband doesn't have an interest in that don't don't push it i would just say try it and and see and if you you know you know your you know your own husband so if he would be interested in the history of school then ask him otherwise yeah that's this is a step that i wouldn't recommend that you take just because it 
might be completely unnecessary. Another thing that you can do though is you can actually suggest a trial period to, to just show your husband that the homeschooling method that you would like to use is actually a good fit for your child. You know, maybe ask for three months or even four weeks, which yeah, you can't get a whole lot accomplished a lot of times in four weeks, especially if you're a new homeschooler and you have to get into that whole routine. But ask for some sort of trial period. And you can share, you know, photos and a, a log of the activities that you have been doing with your child. You could share, you know, work samples and projects that you've been doing. Or, you know, you could all just sit down and have a conversation and, you know, include your child in that and talk about the things that they have been doing at school. Now, if your husband is not comfortable with a complete trial like that, suggest a combination method, like a combination model, what I would call relaxed homeschooling. That's, that's how we homeschool. We've been homeschooling with a relaxed homeschooling model for many years now, and it has worked out really well. And this might be something that would work really well with a family dynamic of a husband who would like a more structured day for their child where, and sometimes that might mean getting up earlier and things like that. We'll talk about that in a bit, but a more structured day, whereas the mother might want something more relaxed, something a little more natural. Relaxed homeschooling is great for that because it's a great way for you to work in the routine and the structured school day, usually for reading, writing, and arithmetic, what they call the three R's. That can be done very easily with a, a sit down traditional schooling method. And then you can approach the other subjects in a more relaxed way or whatever way that, that you prefer to do it, whether it's literature based, whether it's project based learning, whether it's a Charlotte Mason method. I, I found that it's really a good mix. Now getting into the, like waking up at a certain time, before I forget, I just wanted to tackle this. You don't have to get up at eight o'clock in the morning for to, to homeschool your children. Some families do. I know some homeschooling families who prefer to wake up at 7 a.m. because then they can get done super early. My family is not like that. We right now we start usually around nine in the morning, but we have we're starting at nine in the morning now. We used to start at ten in the morning, and at one point we were actually starting at twelve because it usually just works around my husband's work schedule. When he is home, I, I prefer not to be homeschooling during that time because I would rather be sitting there at the table with him before he leaves for work. So I try, you know, to to do that instead. So yes, yeah, so our schedule works more around our husband not our husband my husband <laughs> anyway um, but I would I would say to you to you know just again have another conversation and just say what if we would if we would start our school day at 9 30 in the morning would that work for you you know and just explain that you can relax and children do need more sleep studies have shown that children and especially teenagers would do much better if they had more sleep. So, you know, share that with them and just explain to them how you would rather ease into the day in a non-stressful way so that, you know, the, the children can not only have a more enjoyable homeschooling day, but because it will be easier for them to retain their information and it will also be less stressful for you, the mom, who is dealing with a cranky child who was woken up too early. So, I know that in our family, we I did try um, an unschooling method for a while and the, the lack of structure with unschooling. And I know that some people will tell me that with unschooling, you can have structure. Well, I did have some structure in our, in our unschooling days. It wasn't enough for us. So for us, even if, if you are a mom who would like to do a more relaxed and a more natural way of learning, I will say that for a lot of children, having that bit of structure in the routine is actually really, really good for them. And it will help them to stay on task, especially if they know that, you know, they're going to be doing this first and then this next and then this next and this happens after that. And for a lot of children, it really does help them to set their mind at ease and it just makes your day go much smoother anyway so really a combination of what your husband is looking for and what you are looking for might actually end up being the best bet 
Now I do have one more question that I have a very short answer for that also was left on my channel a few months ago. So I'm just going to share that with you now. And this is from Leghorn Life. And as you can see, this comment was left six months ago, but it says, did you ever have people challenge the fact that you issued a high school diploma, such as telling you that it is not valid? I know that some people do have issues like this. I see it all the time because I'm a member of HSLDA, so I get their newsletter and I will read it and I will see that, yeah, there are some homeschooling families who will have issues with employers not wanting to hire their children because they have a homeschooling diploma. And so then HSLD, HSLDA has to intervene. And if you are dealing with something like that, I would say that HSLDA, Homeschool Legal Defense Association, is your best bet. I personally, thankfully, have never had to deal with that. No one has ever questioned my children's homeschool, high school diplomas. So, yeah, that's why I said I have a really short answer for that. But, again, I'm just going to reiterate that if you are having issues, contact HSLDA. I will leave a link in the description for them, too, and they will help you with that. But anyway, that's all that I have for you today. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet and would like to hear more of what I have to say, I would love if you would do that. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave one either here or over on Instagram. And if you like my work and would like to check out my Patreon page, I will leave a link in the description box for that as well. And I hope you have a great day.